yeah. it's the heat wave that we, we're having that's the problem. You know, it's this next week, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, it's next week the heat wave, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How, how long have we heard that for? It's always yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow next week. Anyway, we're we're live. We're live on Hi Facebook. Hi. Hello, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. And hi, LinkedIn now as well, because we're putting it on our on our company yeah. page. Wow. That's new. We have to be oh, we did it last it. week. Oh, did you? Yeah. All right. We did it last week. Put it onto the company page so the people who are following our company page, all 290 of them, will basically <laughs> see what the meeting's like. Real? Right, should we crack on? Yeah, go on then. God's sake, I've been waiting for you. You wait all right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to One Hour Networking, hosted by Gareth James of Clockwork Eye. Hi, everybody. I'm Gareth from Clockwork Eye, who specialises in video marketing, video production, and video training. I'm myself, Gareth Bottom with Morton Fleet Services, and I help people with long term and short term leasing queries with vehicles. Uh, we're going to do some 60 second introductions. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a 10 minute discussion, are we, Gareth? Have you got a discussion point? I'm having a look now, mate. You having a look? Inflation going up to 3.2%. It's not great. It's yeah, not, we could go with that. It's not a good one, but uh, it's a poor story this morning that I read. Uh, and then we're going to jump into some breakout rooms and have about 25 minutes to find out much more about what each of us do. So we're going to start with six seconds. Uh, I'm not going to make the fatal mistake of having Tony going last this week, so you're going to have to go first and cheer us all up, and then we can get some really interesting conversation going. <laughs> Mr. Carter, over to I, you. I, I just, just, just want to uh, just let everybody know I have some new cards. You all know my 10 second card, okay? When you're yep. 10 seconds left, and you all know that I have the one minute left card uh, for when talks and that. For, so for people who like to go on, <laughs> Phil. Um, <laughs> <basically>, <laughs> Uh, when you've gone over, I have the minus 10 second card, yeah? And then when you're really going on, I have the... <laughs> and I spelled it wrong. I spelled it wrong, so I have to put the other L in. So that, that, that you all know about that now. Right, let's go. He was bored one afternoon. Right, Mr Carter, followed by Steve Long. I wonder if I can get the first relay of the day. Yeah, that'd be quite a challenge, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Tony. I uh, company's Legacy Studios, as it says on on the tin, uh, and I do wills, powers of attorney, funeral plans, and also a trust to protect your assets. And one of the reasons I've used the trust for recently was for my aunt, who was going into long term care. And I moved the house out of her ownership into trust, not to avoid care home fees because that's illegal, but to make sure that if she died, the house wasn't caught up in probate and could sell quickly, uh, which is the case because she has and the house is on the market and going through. Land register at the moment is taking 10 weeks to change the ownership title, so that's slowing things down, but there you go, you can't have everything. People should plan ahead, blasting powers of attorney used to say 12 weeks, they're now saying 20 weeks to register. So anybody who's in any doubt at all should get these things in place straight away. So that's Tony from the Legacy Studio. Your friends should see me before they go. Thanks, Tony. Steve, followed by the other Tony, please. Morning, everybody. <clears throat> Following on from what Tony said, I would attended a one-hour webinar yesterday from the PFS about trusts and the using trusts. So it was very, very interesting but my company's called Yorkshire Rose we're an independent whole of market financial services company regulated by the FCA so I make sure that people's protection needs are taken care of very important in the current times we're living in whether that's just straightforward term assurance or critical illness cover income protection or family income benefit we also look at pension consolidation and savings making sure you've got enough money in retirement so that the money doesn't run out before your time on this planet runs out. We also look at inheritance tax planning and we make sure that all the policies we write are written in trust so that they pay out straight away and you don't have to wait for a grant of probate to be granted. And because we're independent and hold on market, I can get you the best policy to suit your individual circumstances. Steve Long from Yorkshire Rose, thank you. Thanks Steve and Tony Rondo please. Okay. Morning, everyone. Teddy Redondo, Cosmos Currency Exchange. Uh, we help clients save time and money on their bank account to bank account currency exchange transfer requirements. Uh, we now also have local bank accounts 
not only in London, but in Amsterdam, New York, and now in Toronto. So any clients uh, that are based in Canada, the United States and Europe, no longer have to do international SWIFT transfer of funds back into a London-based bank account. So that should help uh, speed up the process even more and help clients save uh, money on their banking side of the transaction. So that is what we do. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Tony. We'll have Lindsay next, followed by Kevin. Good morning, everyone. I've got some fantastic news from Utility Warehouse. We have had the biggest announcement in the nine years that I've been with the company. And that is that every single person that joins Utility Warehouse taking all the services will be guaranteed to save money. So what they're doing, what they're putting, and that's regardless, there's no small print in it. That is regardless of what introductory deals that you're on with your current suppliers, we will price match whatever you're on, plus give you at least fifty pounds. So, it's an absolutely fantastic like with with the number of companies that are going bust at the moment, the number of smaller energy companies that are going bust. Price price increases are going to happen from October. It is, you know, get in now, get people you know in now. We guarantee to save you money, and we also give you some cash back. We we top up your cash back by fifty pounds as well. So there's at least I think there's at least one hundred and fifty pounds on the table for anybody joining Utility Warehouse now. Wow, brilliant! Thanks, Lindsay. And Honestly, we'll have, fantastic. Cheers. We'll have Kevin then followed by Phil. Hi, morning, everyone. It's great to be here on the Gareth and Tony show. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a partner with Trevorium, uh, and I sell membership to the world's leading travel club to people that love to travel. So our best level of membership is two hundred and fifty dollars US in the first month, then one hundred and twenty-five dollars monthly thereafter. So what you're going to get for that membership? Every year, every member gets one a free trip to one of 36 countries. You get up to three further trips for as little as $1 per night at over 2,500 resorts and hotel accommodation at up to 70% discount at, on the likes of Expedia and Booking.com. And that's at over a million hotels. So let's just give you a couple of examples of a colleague in California who in 10 days time is off to Florida for a week and is costing us $72 for the week. Uh, my colleague in the, down with myself, who some of you will know, that went to the Canary Islands last February 2020, and their accommodation cost them less than their bacon sandwich at the airport. And final example, hotel in Atlanta, booking.com would charge $2,161. We'll charge $733. So that's what we do at Travorium, disrupting the way people travel. Thanks, Kevin. And we'll have Phil followed by Chris. Good morning, everyone. Um, does worrying about money keep you up at night, cause you to lose sleep? I'm Phil Holdsworth of Orem Gold. We specialise in our money psychology, helping us understand what are those stressors in our lives that cause us to worry about uh, finances, and then understanding how we can uh, develop better money management skills to build resilience and take us forward so that we feel in control, um, confident and have peace of mind when we're dealing with our finances. We had a lady just recently who um, said that she was bad with money and uh, when we got to the bottom of it, it was a critical voice from her childhood. That um, And so we helped her turn that critical voice around and now she is a lot happier. She said, we even saved her life. So I'm Phil Holdsworth of Orem Gold. Thanks, Phil. And Chris, followed by Fraser. Uh, so good morning. I, I know you all go to the gym or perhaps you don't. But the question to you is, when did you last work on your sales muscles, the muscles that help you deliver fantastic pitches, whatever you want in business? Well, I would like to invite you to take one of three free places at my sales boot camp, which starts next Friday. There is a little kind of caveat. You need to have a little interview with me to make sure you're ready. And also at the end of the five weeks, you would need to do some kind of testimonial, assuming you enjoyed it. It starts next Friday at 12 o'clock for 90 minutes on Zoom, and it is free. No other caveats apart from the fact you need to turn up. And I'll talk to you about avatars, niching, email, prospecting, LinkedIn, and then all wrapping it up in a habit building success system to make sure that you carry on doing the do. So if you are interested in that, go to my LinkedIn post yesterday or look at my profile. You'll find the post. You'll tell you how to do it. And then I may see you if you qualify past the interview next Friday for 90 minutes on Zoom.
That's my sales boot camp. Get your muscles ready for selling. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Chris, 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 before Fraser goes and finishes off the 60-second round, Chris, if you drop me the link, I'll put it in the email I follow up with, and also I'll put it in the post I put on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Okay. So put it, let me have do you want me to put it in the chat, or do you want me to send it to you separately? Stick it in the chat. I'll copy-paste it over. All right. Don't worry. Thank you. Are you done now? Yeah, just thank, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and over to you, Fraser. Really? Okay, can I go? Absolutely. <laughs> Lady, yeah. Three, two, one. Morning. Fraser Will from Smart PA. Uh, win to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll start. I'll start you again. There you go. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, and take two. Uh, wouldn't it be great to have more time in the day, more time to develop your business, look after your clients, and even look after yourself? Well, that's why it, where Smart PA come in. Delegate your administration tasks to us. Get them off your desk. All your admin-related tasks, we'll take them over for you, give you that extra time in the day. Um, free you up to do all these other things and, and give you the extra time and the extra 24 hours. You'd be surprised what admin tasks are. They're not just typing and photocopying. They can be anything at all. It's lying on your desk, paperwork, taking up your time, just tedious, time-consuming, and quite frankly, boring if you're a specialist in any other field. So if that feels like a good deal to you, Give me a shout and we'll discuss where we can remove things from your desk and give you more time to yourself. Fraser Whittle at Smart BA. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks, Fraser. And thanks, everybody, for a great 60 second round. Gareth, what are we going to talk about then? Well, we'll go with the inflation because it is interesting. I've, uh, um, I've done a quick scan read of the uh, uh, BBC's thing and they don't mention Brexit once, which is quite interesting. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> despite Brexit, um, <laughs> it's the largest rise in history from 2% to 3.2% in a month. Yeah. yeah. What did they put that down to? Used cars, food and petrol are the major factors driving the, uh, the price up. Um, partly part, used cars mainly because the, de the, the demand on new cars because they can't supply them. So used car prices are going up through the roof. Yeah. Um, Food is probably down to the transport issues, you know, the, uh, the lorry drivers. Um, I, I don't know about petrol. I don't know enough about it, so I can't, I can't answer that. So. Fuel is higher. The, um, Fuel has gone up higher. I, I watch the charging, just by default, the charging on electric cars on the, on the uh, networks round, and used to be 30p. <laughs> Generally, Tesla's is now 37 on some, and there was one place on there charging 69p a kilowatt. It was gone suddenly, whack. And it's Lindsay's fault because she sells electricity. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other country. I don't sell electricity. I switch you, people and you give them money on the electricity that they have to pay I, anyway. I know. I know. <laughs> um, the. Um, the other interesting point that they raise is that the price of going out to eat has gone up substantially yeah. year in year. Uh, and that's down to the fact that last year we had the help to eat out kind of program, you know, the £10 off. Uh, yeah. Well, suddenly that catches up with inflation because they do it year yeah. on year, don't they? So eating out is now £10 more. Container shipping prices are higher, have gone through the roof as well. Massively. Are they 14000 or something? I was talking to a client who does um, he does the the, the 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 comfortable bits of a sofa. He makes all the foam and the polyfiber and feathers and all the rest of it. And he imports feathers and stuff like that. And a container, because you pay for the container and you buy the product at the from the you know provider contents inside it, but you buy a container and pay for a container as well. And it went from two thousand to um, thirteen thousand pounds for a container. Yeah, there's massive some, increase. There's some 11, coming down to four thousand now, but I think they'll go like very quickly, and that'll yeah. be it. And the Chinese were holding the ships. Yeah. As the price was going up, they were holding the ships back. They were slowing them down. Yeah. To come to port. Uh, but I mean, Steve will remember it. I 
it used to be 27 percent inflation in the 70s yeah well i guess the implication though was what, what are we going to do about it you know we can talk about it but how's it going to affect us are we going to increase our prices are we going to manage our costs you know what's the impact on us as business people in terms of the output of the inflation rise from my point of view it doesn't affect me because of the fact i provide a digital service but it affects your living costs so well, that's yes. going to affect your sales costs your sales price isn't it i suppose if you go down to what i have for lunch but uh, yeah um, then, then I'll agree. But I, I mean, we're pretty economic, me and the missus, anyway. I don't, I don't buy pre, I don't buy pre-made anything. Our prices have gone up significantly in the last twelve months. How much does everybody pay? Right, so it's a weekly shop. There's only two of us. Fifty quid. Right, that's what we budget to. Right. What does what do other people pay? Just out of curiosity. A lot more than that. How many yeah, of there's you? Two, there's two of us, and we probably spend about 100 wow. thereabouts. But there's two of us, and I don't look. Mine's about 70, I would have thought. The two of you. Two of us. Yeah. Mm. Fraser just gets concerned. The key You're side asking. of the fish and chip van that comes around. That's, that's gone, actually. We so spend, <laughs> we spend about, up our budget. <laughs> we, we spend about 30 pounds just on blueberries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, you're asking the wrong person. Lindsay without the blueberries. Go on, go on, Phil. Phil's been trying to get a word of edgeways for ages. I was just going to say that as far as I'm concerned, you're asking the wrong person. Oh, dear. Do you not participate in the shopping? You're not one of these old men who sits in Oh, I live for it. I live and breathe for it. (laughs) Not. (laughs) I do the cooking, so I do do the shopping. I do contribute. I, I do contribute to it. I, I say what's missing at the end. <laughs> surprising he's lived this that long, isn't it? Really? Oh, no, it is a surprise. Yeah. Right. I think it's going to get. I think inflation is going to get more. They think it's going to come back down fairly quickly. A lot of the people, but then I, and the big problem is if it goes up and they put interest rates to curb it. How many people are going to be stuffed on the mortgage? Oh, loads. Mm. I remember, do you remember Margaret Thatcher's era? The 15% interest rates. Yeah. Absolute bonkers. Yeah. That comes back to what Chris has just said, though. What are we going to do to, what are we going to do as business owners to, to help us through that problem? Because we can't affect what the Bank of England do if they do put interest rates. <clears throat> so what, what do we do? Do we need to charge more? Do we need to cut costs? But can people afford to pay more if mm. the cost well, the of pay more, going the, up? The, the pay more in everything else, Gareth, because inflation yeah. is going up. So uh, they're having to pay more. A lot of people will, but, do we? My thoughts on the matter are, um, in oh. some respects, and take it or leave it, but um, buyers all putting our prices up, which we could justify because of the cost of living, all we're doing is we're adding to this vicious spir- upward spiral. Yeah. That's all we're doing. And, um, mm. and, and you know, I think somewhere along the line, um, we, we've got to think, is that the best way forward? Um, and if, for example, the services that we provide um, are uh, quite not just beneficial but needful for some people, is it actually the best way forward? Um, so those are the questions I would ask myself. Just a cycle, isn't it? You know, yeah. and uh, I think with the Bank of England, they're forecasting 4.1%. Knowing the Bank of England, that's bound to be wrong and it's bound to get even higher than yeah. that. Yeah. But it's temporary, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and they, they'll probably increase interest rates, but not until this time next year, because mm. they're always very, very, very slow to act. So that's from good. my point of view, it's good news because rising inflation puts pressure on the Bank of England to rise rates, which makes the pound stronger. So from an interest yeah. rate point, from it's an lack of supply that causes it. Um, but, um, you know, it is a cycle. It is a cycle, and, well, and then it will level out. There's well, Steve's action. comment brings another thing up. If it's lack of supply, what happens when they stop QE? Yeah. They stop what? Quantity of easing. Yeah. I just printing money. What's going to happen then? Back well, in November, really we were down. on holiday and the Bank of England, like Tony said, the Bank of England interest said interest rates were going up to 15%. Well, my, my mortgage 
rate went up to 15 percent and we mm. were on holiday on like Cromer or somewhere like that and I just all I could think about is how on earth are we going to afford it because you know a lot of your expenditure is fixed whether it's gas I mean I could should have gone to see Lindsay it was gas electricity <laughs> uh, council tax water rates things you can't change and the only thing you could cut down on was food you know, because mm. your your income isn't going to go up, is it? Your income's going to stay the same. <coughs> but your, your uh, but the income is going up. up. Wages are going up, and there's a million there's a million uh, vacancies out there. Record number of vac job oh, yeah. vacancies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. get your violin gar out, Gareth, because when I took my first mortgage, it was twelve and a half percent. So going up to fifteen wasn't as big a deal as going from one to three for people. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And there's a lot more fixed rate products in the market now than there used to be 30 years ago. You know, so a lot of people are sheltered from the interest rate increases because of, of the fixed rate for three years or five year deals or seven year deals. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a natural break as well. On the well, plane. actually, one of the best deals out there at the moment is equity release at 3% for life. Which, which is okay with wages going up if you're not an entrepreneur and working for yourself. Because if you're not going to put your price up and you're not going to, because your costs are going to go up, you end up going to earn less. Mm. You know, so you're, you're, you're as, as sole traders, as business people, you're going to actually be worse off if you don't do something about it. Yeah. You know, it's all right, yes, getting into this spiral, but, you know, we, we either, we can't fight the spiral on ourselves. All we're doing, yeah. all we're going to do is become poorer, mm. because mm. we, you know, a lot of us here aren't waged. We, you know, you know, we're not salaried. No, that's right. Mm. I mean, yeah. if you want to be salaried and keep pace with what's going on, get in the public sector, or, or get a job, go work well, for somebody. Well, the jobs, yeah, but they'll have to cut. They'll be cutting the costs, so they'll be looking at wages and everything else like yeah. that. Yeah. Or become but, a utility warehouse partner. Exactly. And solve <laughs> all your issues. <laughs> we, we, we work with services that are essential can i just say if if you're going to worry about money just have a word with me and then come oh, this has just turned into a plug-in session <laughs> i'll work on my sales boot camp and i'll find tell you how to find more money exactly and if you, you want to come to a self-promotion session if you want to convert <laughs> all to rupees then talk to tony yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how to <laughs> But seriously, I mean, Gareth has got a point, you know, at the end of the day, if the wave, tidal wave is coming, you can either wait and get yourself knocked out by it, or you can run, or you can find a way to, you know, get on top of the wave and, and avoid the... Oh. But you've got to do something. If you just stay standing still, you're just going to drown. So, mm. Gareth's right. You've got to do something to be proactive about the action that's coming. And just on the theme of earlier, if you're going to drown, you'll need a will, so come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> another, theme, another theme of that once you once Phil sorted out your mindset with regards to your money and Lindsay sorted out your utilities and Chris has got you to do better sales yeah and Steve has helped you invest it and Tony's helped you convert it go see Kevin because you need a freaking holiday <laughs> <laughs> you just leave all the work for a smart PA while you're on your holiday and Tony's going to make sure like you get really good for an exchange <laughs> yeah. nice open a business <laughs> Gareth, can you give us a car for a few weeks as well? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a bag yeah, for all of you. Yeah, before you go, you'll need to go and see Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just in case the worst happens. Really, I think we've got it all tied up there. We have. Right, yeah. let's go into breakout rooms on that note. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, we'll do two or five. Okay. And I'm going to do a screen split again. Boom. You are who you are, where you are. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you disappear. You're in the good team. If you disappear. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're in the you're in you're in the good team. Um, <clears throat> do, do, do. Oh, the suspense. I know oh. the anticipation is just killing you. <laughs> Who can I see? You could have just done it randomly, we'd have been in there by now. No. No, I can't it do it randomly. When was the last time you ran a Zoom meeting, did the technical side of it? Me? You can't, you can't just say, oh, assign five people into one room. 
You have to do it manually. You can do it randomly. It would just, if you've got one room and you say assign automatically, oh, you okay. put nine people into one room. Well, assign two. Just get on with Go it. Go with it. Right, okay. We're, we're, still, on, on. we're right. still on Facebook Live. I know we are. We're going to say bye Facebook in a minute. Oh, I could do bye Facebook now if you want. Bye Facebook. Jesus. <laughs> bye. God, I get so screamed. You had a good day yesterday. Can't have two on the run. I know. It was a good day. It was a great day yesterday. And then, and then I came to see you lot.